Hello, in this video we're going to be looking at the cosmological principle. This is going to be our introduction to further cosmology as we start looking at how we have learned and make, made predictions uh, about the universe in terms of its evolution, uh, how it began, how it might end, um, and all the things that we have no clue about because there's a lot of walls that we're up against as we study the universe and we're going to talk about some of those sticking points. Uh, but so the first thing we got to do is just talk about this. It's a basic idea, but a really interesting one called the cosmological principle. And looking at the picture here, you can see this is the basic idea. Uh, what it's shown is if we look off in any direction from where we are, no matter which way we look, we see pretty much the same thing everywhere. And that's the cosmological principle. Uh, it states two things, two kind of vocab terms here. Uh, claims about the universe, that the universe is homogeneous and isotropic. So the first one, homogeneous, means the same throughout. So at any location, the universe looks the same to, say, any observer at any point. So we here on planet Earth look out and we see a bunch of galaxies nearby. And we look a little further, we see some quasars and stuff. And we look as far as we can possibly look and we see the cosmic microwave background. Well, the idea is someone on Andromeda would see the same thing. And someone in a galaxy halfway across the observable universe would look out and see the same thing. The other idea is that the universe is isotropic. It looks the same in any direction. So we can look, go to the North Pole and look due north, go to the South Pole, look straight out. Uh, you know, no matter which direction that you look, you see the same thing. So there's not like one side of the sky that has uh, galaxies closer together than another side of the sky or something like that. Uh, all right, so homogeneous and isotropic are the two kind of claims about the universe here, uh, which is pretty astounding that it is very, 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 very consistent and uniform. And we're going to look at some ways that we've measured that. This idea does apply to the large scale. You may possibly be thinking if you look out from the surface of the Earth at like the night sky, um, you see like this big glowing white circle that's not anywhere else that's the moon uh or during the day you look out there's a big bright ball that burns your eyes that's the sun uh right so we ignore the local stuff quote the nearby things and we're looking on a large very large scale here we're talking forget our galaxy that's a quote local feature but everything else when we look at the overall structure around us is uniform in this way Uh, here's a picture, uh, a map of the sky, of the universe, a slice, if you like, taken by the Sloan uh, Digital Sky Survey. So you can see, um, this is the idea. We are, if we're taking a measurement from here, we look out in one direction, we see galaxies, and they're pretty evenly spread out. And in any direction we look, we see the same general pattern, clusters of galaxies with areas of space in between. Um, this is a picture of the data we have so far, but of course we also know that when we look at the very edge of our uh, vision, we could say, we do see and measure in the background this cosmic microwave background radiation, the leftover radiation from the Big Bang. And no matter which way we point our sensors, we see this same slice, again ignoring like the band of the Milky Way. So there's a couple implications to this. One is that there must not be a center, even though to us it looks like uh, when we look at it in every direction, we see everything perfectly uniform around us. The idea is that no matter where you are in the universe, that is true. Uh, and that's because the universe is expanding, of course. And as we've looked at with the ideas like the Big Bang, there is no center to this expansion. Everything is just getting further away. That causes the effect of making it look like you are in the center, uh, but there is no center to the universe. And when we talk about isotropic, we should talk about the CMB because that's the other time that we've talked about this word. And when we first talk about CMB, we say the CMB is pretty much isotropic. Pretty much isotropic, here you go. This is, here's some numbers for you for pretty much. Very, very, very 
consistent and uniform. Um, there, you know, you look at any point in the sky and you can measure the frequency of microwave uh, radiation that we're getting at that point, and I can find the associated temperature. When I look at all the different directions across the whole surface of the sky, the fluctuations in that number are very small. They are, here you go, in the fourth decimal place out of two or three Kelvin. Uh, so it's a very, very, very small fluctuation when I look all across the entire uh, map of the sky. Very isotropic, although we do call this uh, these these slight deviations are called anisotropies. And they're really important, believe it or not, these small, tiny differences in temperature that, again, reflect small, tiny differences in the temperature and density of the very early universe tell us a lot about the universe. Um, number one, they tell us how stars and galaxies formed. There were patches, apparently, if we look at the CMB, there were patches of space that were slightly cooler than other patches. And these places where there was slightly cooler, slightly denser material was where the first nebula and stars could start to form. And we can trace those anisotropies, those, quote, dark spots, the cooler spots, to the points in space where galaxies and structures and clusters and superclusters of galaxies have evolved. So in a very one-to-one -one way, it maps for us where these galaxies started in these denser, very slightly cooler regions. The other thing that this anisotropy tells us about, believe it or not, is it tells us that the universe is flat. Probably. Uh, we'll look at this geometry thing in a second here. Because uh, that's a weird idea. But believe it or not, the CMB matches this idea of a flat universe. All right. So you want to think of these temperature differences like differences in density. Uh, at the time of recombination, which is remember when visible light started to pass through the very early universe, uh, that is when the CMB was emitted, when uh, the simplest atoms formed from electrons, protons combining together. And we see it maps up exactly with today's large-scale structure of the universe. Uh, there is a great video on Cognity, a little animation of them kind of showing mapping a dark spot of the CMB to an evolving cluster of universes, uh, sorry, of, of galaxies, which is really a uh, really interesting and worth looking at. All right, so when we talk about the geometry of space, the good news is you don't have to get into this too much. For the most part, to be completely honest, in terms of the IB, you just need to be able to talk about how the CMB provides evidence for a flat universe. And that might sound like nonsense. Um, the very simplified version is that Einstein's theory of relativity talked a lot about space-time. And the idea, if we have talked about or you've ever seen the uh, you know, picture of like a bowling ball on a tarp pulling it down, and that's gravity. Matter influences and curves space-time. So space-time can have a curved kind of geometry. And the idea is overall, what does the geometry of the universe look like? There's a couple options that could be closed, open, or flat, and we'll look at those. Um, but those are the three possibilities. And it turns out all of the evidence shows us that we are living in a flat universe, which is pretty amazing. It's, uh, it's kind of the middle point, and it's a cutoff. And if it was any bit more one way, it would be open. If it was a little bit more the other way, it would be closed. Uh, so I'll put some pictures up here. You want to be careful with these. You're going to see these all over the place. Um, they're very tricky because we are talking uh, about space, which is three-dimensional. We're talking about it being curved, uh, which good luck uh, imagining that. That is very difficult, impossible, really, truly, to visualize in your mind. The best we can do is make analogies. So we talk about curvature in terms of like 2D surfaces, how a piece of paper, say, could be curved. And then we have to like extrapolate that to our space being curved 
which you can do mathematically pretty easily. You change a two to a three, or you change a three to a four. All right, in your head, picturing it, uh, basically impossible. All right, but here's the analogies. So this would be a flat sheet of paper. Uh, this would be closed, so it would be a paper that bends in on itself, and this would be open. They sometimes call it a saddle shape. Um, so it's kind of like hyperbolic, if you like, in both directions. It's a, it's a Pringle. A Pringle is an open shape. Uh, all right, so again, these are like 2D surfaces, how they can be curved in different ways. The idea is these are kind of analogies for space itself. Um, one of the other ways you can think of it that's a little better to wrap your head around is if I walk from this place to this place to this place on a flat sheet of paper, it's a different distance than if I walk between those three same spaces on a curved piece of paper. Uh, just like if you're you know, flying in an airplane across the globe, you have to take the curvature into account. So we would know we were in a flat universe based on if I go from point A to point B to point C, we could measure that distance and figure out if it's flat or not. Now we can't travel nearly far enough to do that, but the CMB, which has traveled billions of light years to reach us, would have shifted slightly based on the shape of the universe. All right, and so the takeaway and the part that really matters is that we can pretty accurately model what the CMB should look like in a closed universe, in a flat universe, in an open universe. Uh, and overwhelmingly, the CMB that we actually measure matches the CMB that we see in a flat universe. And those, those little anisotropies, these little splotches, these very small differences, again, the difference between red and blue here might be like 0. 0.0005 Kelvin, but those little differences in temperature, uh, you know, should be spread out different amounts depending on the shape of the universe. So the shape of the universe predicts what the CMB should look like. We have measured the CMB to match what we would get in a flat universe. And that's the real big takeaway here. All right, the last thing uh, that we like to study is the different measurements that have been taken of the cosmic microwave background. And you can see this is all relatively recent. Uh, the first real good measurement was taken of the whole sky uh, in 1990 by a COBE satellite. You can see this is from Cognity. One of the IB's favorite things is to ask you about these three different satellites that went up and how they took these measurements. Um, and so in 1990, the COBE satellite went up and measured basically it looked like this. So it really was like a big splotch. And it was hard to tell then that there really were anisotropies, that there were differences. It looked like a pretty smooth, even, you know, more or less three degrees Kelvin uh, 3 Kelvin everywhere. Uh, in 2001, they put up the WMAP satellite, and this one had better sensors, better technology. We could get a better resolution. You could start to measure these really tiny differences in temperature, and you can see here cooler spots, warmer spots, and we started to get a better sense of these anisotropies, which helped us tie that to the evolution of the universe and where galaxies started to form. Uh, and really understand the curvature of the universe, too. And then the Planck satellite is the most recent one. It went up in 2009, the Planck Space Observatory. Uh, and we get an even more detailed picture. So as you get more and more detailed pictures of the background radiation, you can really get into the details of what's going on to cause those differences. There's a whole lot of other things you can measure from the CMB, but those are the two big ones. For sure, the two that the IB will be interested in. We will have an activity on Schoology uh, where you will kind of look at some of these measurements in detail and these different missions that went up to take the measurements uh, and exactly what they told us, but that's the big picture idea. Universe is isotropic and homogenous. All right, so there you go. We will be getting into things more as we look back at the very early and the very end of the universe. Uh, have fun.